gentleman from Florida, Mr. Donalds, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. And Madam Chair, also thank you for the indulgence before we have to go vote. Um, heard a lot today. Don't want to do too much speechifying, because we do that too often here. Uh, Ms. Swearer, it was just, it's been referenced a lot today, actually, about the need for universal background checks and closing the quote-unquote gun show loophole. Can you actually explain in detail what that policy actually means? Sure. So universal background checks start with this, this general conception of what could be, you know, at, at its core, legitimate. Um, right now, the only, uh, sorry, m most gun sales, uh, whether it's brick and mortar gun stores, whether it's a bought over the internet, anything that occurs interstate, um, those require a background check under existing law. The only exception is for intrastate sales between private sellers, and that is largely because they do not have access to the NICS system. They cannot, like FFLs, you know, call up the FBI and say, hey, can you run a background check? Um, now, could that theoretically be a way that, that interstate sale for individuals who are otherwise prohibited to obtain firearms? Sure. As I point out, uh, the problems with HR8 and all of those other bills is that this is a low reward endeavor. This is already not how most criminals are obtaining their firearms. They are already obtaining them through the black market, through informal channels um, that are not in any way, shape, or form addressed by interstate private sales. And on top of that, things like HR8 would criminalize a whole host of responsible temporary low-risk transfers between law-abiding citizens, like if your buddy wants to borrow your hunting rifle, um, or you know, you're know you going on a month-long trip to Europe and you want your guns to be secured in your friend's safe next door, you'd have to go through a background check, legally transfer title of your guns to that individual, and then legally transfer title back to yourself when you're done. Um, right, so that's the problem. So Ms. Ware, real quick. So the policy of universal background checks would that have stopped the shooter in Udalvi from acquiring his weapon? It would not have stopped the shooter in Udalvi. Would it have stopped the shooter in Parkland from acquiring his weapon? It would not have stopped, with perhaps one lone exception, a single mass public shooter in the last 20 years, because they all either passed or were capable of passing background checks, and that's the problem. The shooter in, the shooter at, uh, in Sandy Hook, the, 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 new, the Newtown shooting, did that shooter kill his mother and take the guns? Yes, he did. Okay. And I think... I, I forget his age, but he otherwise did not have a disqualifying history. The shooter in Uvalde, did he actually shoot his grandmother in the face before he went to perpetrate the crimes in Uvalde? Uh, to my knowledge, yes. Folks, here's the deal. One of the things that we've seen through all these mass shootings, I was a member of the state legislature during the Parkland shooting, so I was in the legislature during that time period. The one thing is crystal clear that these mass shooters that target our schools are all psychopaths. They are psychotic. In Parkland, the red flags were there for everybody to see. The school district did not act. That came out in the Parkland report. The, the, the site itself was not secured. That came out in the Parkland report. In Uvalde, the back door was open. It was open, wide open. The, the perpetrator shot his grandmother in the face. That is insane. Um, I know in this bill, the proposed bill uh, today or tomorrow, they're talking about raising the, gun, raising the age to buy rifles from 18 to 21. Are we now going to say that a 19-year-old who is a legal adult in the United States does not have the mental capacity to own a shotgun or an AR-15, but they have the mental capacity to enlist in the military? They have the mental capacity to actually sign legal contracts? They have the mental capacity to be treated as an adult by law enforcement? And they also have the mental capacity to vote in the United States, but they don't have the mental capacity to own a shotgun or to own a rifle and not inflict harm on their fellow man? You, look, I, look, man, I got three sons. Two of them are school age now. When these shootings occur, man, they, they, they hurt me because I could only imagine what it is as a parent. I'm a parent. But I also understand that I have a responsibility as a legislator to actually defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution, the Second Amendment is there. It is our responsibility to defend it. And if we look at the data from the mass shootings that have occurred in the United States over the last 20 years, the one constant, especially when it comes to schools, is that these shooters are young, they are mentally disturbed, and the vast majority of people who are in their age group would not even think or go down the pathway of committing these atrocities. We don't pass laws because of the quote unquote one or two psychopaths we only pass laws in order to maintain the actual legal momentum of freedom in the United States. 
The Second Amendment is not there to stop psychopaths. Let's be perfectly honest with it. It is not. That's not its purpose. The purpose of the Second Amendment is clear. It is to protect the constitutional rights of American citizens. These shootings are awful. They're awful. But the data is clear about how, how to find the people that actually do this. And the measures put in front of us would not have actually stopped these shootings. I'll yield back. The, the gentleman's time has ex expired. Votes have been called to allow members to vote. The committee will stand in recess until the end of the first vote series. The committee stands in recess.